Yeah, and with this banger soundtrack, we had some exec please here. Very good. Uh, we go to the next run, which is none other than Katarev, and the crowd is going absolutely nuts. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> okay, let's let's go like this. Hello. 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 Uh, yeah, that's me, Katarev. Uh, I already spared you of half a minute of loading screens and half a minute of slow walks, because this is where the run actually starts. And I will start immediately, because there will be more slow walking after this. So, three, two, one, go. Um, yeah, so what is Hackathon known for partially is, of course, uh, the famous Mirror's Edge relay races and uh, all the amazing Mirror's Edge runners and runs. Um, sadly, I'm not cool enough for that, but I have a pretty interesting uh, Mirror's Edge knockoff game. So this is Gemini Heroes Reborn, or sometimes also called Heroes Reborn Gemini, because nobody really knows. Um, I think it's a tie-in to some TV series from 2015, which would make sense, because this came out in 2016. And as you can see, it's about as fast-paced as uh, Mirror's Edge. Um, it will pick up a bit in speed later on, but right now we're in the tutorial, and the tutorial will like take <laughs> 10 minutes or something. Um, but yeah, right now we're just uh, making our way somewhat slowly to the next uh, checkpoint and cutscene. So we're playing as Cassandra, um, a teenager who's suffering from amnesia, and she's looking for her parents, and that's her friend Alex, who likes to teleport, as you can see, and make funny noises. Um, right now we can only walk. <laughs> that will change. I wanted to say soon, but it's not really that soon. Um, as you can see, he can run, but only moderately <laughs> faster than we can. Um, but yeah, so we're approaching now the next cutscene, which is just inside this uh, ruin here. And there we will get the smart glasses from Alex. Sometimes the model of the smart glasses uh, desyncs with his hands. I don't think it will this time. Let's see. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Sometimes it's just completely desynced. Um, here we'll do our first uh, <laughs> checkpoint to reload, and you will uh, see that uh, loading screens in this game are also pretty durable. Um, but despite how long this takes, it's still faster than actually listening to them uh, talk about the smart glasses, and you're not missing too much, because even after the checkpoint, they're still talking about them. Now, you will notice the game is in, at least the text is in, in German, and that is because uh, it's always the system language. Even if you install it in Steam using a different language, it will still be the system language. And to change that, you have to go into some uh, dodgy config of the game and change stuff, and I'd rather not touch anything here. Um, but yeah, basically, we were, or Alex told us we should go in here to look for stuff about our parents. Maybe there are some old documents about them, um, but apparently this area is more off limits than what we initially thought. Um, this is supposed to be the stealth tutorial where you can crouch to reduce your noise level, but halfway through you can just walk normally again and the guards will not notice you. While Alex is still uh, yeah, at his initial point talking to us about what to do. He will, however, teleport right behind us here <coughs> and then talk to nobody because we already skipped up here. So you can tell um, in the lower left we have the chat lock, basically. Um, so this is explained as being part of our smart glasses uh, feature. It's, however, pretty impressive how you get the entire chat lock before the lines are even spoken. So that's uh, some future stuff, even though, as you can see in the top right, we're in 2014 right now. So this is where we get a few more movement options, namely sprinting, which is definitely welcome. Um, but right now, we're just like, we don't have anything special apart from that. As you can see, you have some vaulting, some uh, wall scrambling here. You can clip inside Alex for some reason. And now he will uh, yeah, basically stay behind and try to talk to us. This ledge is always pretty interesting. Yeah, we'll basically leave him behind. We shouldn't run away too far from him or else he will slow down. So it's one of those types of missions. Which is totally not an excuse why I'm not having the best movement here. 
Um, so these kind of gaps you can just clear with normal drums. The next one, it's supposed to be a tutorial that you can clear larger gaps with sprinting. Um, and here, of course, the conversation desyncs because we're already talking or getting the conversation about this gap while Alex is somewhere way behind. And now you can enjoy some great lighting in this game and we're waiting for Alex to arrive here. Um, yeah, this is very good. I'm trying to find something less uh, aggressive on the eyes, but it's <laughs> not very easy with the, how the lighting is in this game. But yeah, Alex is quickly making his way over here. Are we really doing this today? And luckily, at least the, the audio is English, so you, you're not experiencing the full German uh, experience. And uh, yeah, now we go into the next level. So how long was that? Oh, only five minutes, okay. Plus the one and a half to two minutes I already spared you, so. As you can tell, not the fast pace start you might be used to from uh, other games. Also not the most fast paced loading screens again. Which is one of the main issues with this game. If you mess up and have to reload checkpoint, you automatically also lose a lot of time. <laughs> And it doesn't make resetting too much fun because you have to go through that entire sequence every time. Um, yeah, so this is all still cutscene slash scripted event stuff. So even less gameplay, but I, I swear at some point there will be somewhat interesting gameplay. Um, so the thing about this game is it's like somewhat inspired by Mirror's Edge regarding the movement, but there are also some unique gimmicks added on top of it, namely some time traveling and telekinesis stuff, which we'll get one after the other now. So here you can see that apparently we can shift through time. In the top right we're now in 2008, so there's a six year gap between the two timelines. We can jump in between. We can't jump in between them freely right now, but we will be able to do so soon. And another thing we can do is peek into the other timeline, basically. So this is also automated here. So we can see in the other timeline, Alex is being dragged away while we're in, in safety in the past timeline. Um, this is not useful at all for speedrunning, but it's used here and in one spot later on in this level just to proceed with the story. But then we don't really need it anymore. Um, but yeah, so. There's two timelines, which is a bit confusing because the one in the past is the one that looks more modern because in the more current timeline, everything is destroyed. So it always throws me for a loop. Not that I really commentate too much about this game usually because I don't play this game usually. Um, but yeah, we're making our way uh, down this level. So here we have a stealth tutorial that we will masterfully complete by just sprinting past this guy and he doesn't follow us. And here we now wait in this like peaking mode until this conversation is over because from that point onwards we will be able to freely shift between timelines which gives us quite the influx of uh, gameplay actually so that's like one of the main gimmicks some of the parts of the level are like destroyed or inaccessible in one of the timelines and so you have to switch into the other one like this so here it's also blocked, but we can switch into the other timeline and so on. So that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. So now we just make our way to the end here. And into another loading screen, so you know what that means. Yes, lots of waiting. Now, interestingly, we can't time shift anymore in the next level. Like, we don't have any of these powers. But you are supposed to, like in this next level, find like a syringe with which you can inject yourself with like the magic stuff that allows you to time shift and do all of this stuff. However, we will not really get that because we'll try to clip out of bounds uh, before getting there. But if you reach the end of the level, you will still have all the powers in the, in the next one, so it's all good. If I can get on top of this forklift, that would be nice. And then the idea is to land on top of this bolt so we can grab this pipe and then grab the ledge above and turn around and use these beams to get over here and then hopefully grab the top edge here. There we go. And then we shouldn't drop down at least.
better. And then we just go straight to the end of the level. Which is down here, and here, and here. So as I said, now we have, uh, like you will see in the top left, we have two different bars, or yeah, meters. So one is whenever we switch between timelines, it depletes, so you can't just spam and keep yourself safe that way. The other one, we, I th yeah, okay, we already have. Um, the other one is for when we use telekinesis, which we also can do right now, which you didn't see because we skipped most of the previous level. So you have like one meter for your time-based abilities and one for your TK uh, abilities. So these guys we have to clear out. Um, we will never have any like guns or weapons like that. You deal damage by throwing objects into other people. Here we can s try to skip ahead slightly. So you can see I can also slow down time, which in turn increases the vertical and horizontal reach of my uh, jumps. It's very useful. Um, but here I have to wait out a conversation. So despite this looking very slowly, uh, looking very slow, it's still faster to just like not slow down time to get higher jumps instead just waiting out this conversation. Here I switch into the other timeline because there would be a tutorial about catching gun projectiles and throwing them back in the other timeline. So we can just skip that, which is very handy. And here you can see the uh, range extent of my like time slowdown, which allows us to cross gaps like this. And another one here. And Alex is talking about stuff, I guess. Not like we really care. So as you can tell, once we get like time traveling and time slowdown and TK abilities, the gameplay uh, started to pick up quite uh, noticeably. Too bad that in the next level this comes to a grinding hold again. <laughs> At least, like, okay, at the, f at the start there will be a bit of gameplay, but then we get a lot, a lot of talking that we can't skip, sadly. Um, again, here we are just waiting for this first conversation to be over. Already waiting here, so I want to shift into the other timeline, obviously, because I can't proceed here. Okay. Then there are some guards here that are not very active. Here we wait a bit, because in the other timeline there would be a tutorial. Again, don't really care. Can already activate the terminal there. And here I, you actually can get stuck, which I <laughs> found out in practice earlier, so taking it a bit more cautiously. And here is another checkpoint reload. Again, um, looks like the loading screen here takes forever and it's not worth it for RTA, but or in real time, but it's act it, it actually is. like. It, it takes a very long time to wait out the conversation. Um, sadly, you can't checkpoint reload the next conversations um, because you have to wait them out since the trigger for the next level is at the end of it. Here we just uh, have to wait again for the conversation. You might be picking up on a pattern here. Okay. And then here the main antagonist is introduced this guy and now there will be a uh, like two minute conversation where, during which we can already prepare for the fight that will trigger after the conversation. So one of the most effective uh, or helpful projectiles we can have are these kind of fire, fire extinguishers or sometimes they're also uh, they contain like gas or whatever basically anything that explodes very effective. And uh, yeah, now we just wait until the conversation is over and uh, can do whatever. It's pretty cool. I knew it would draw you back here. What do you mean back here? I've never been here. No. So much about your childhood you don't remember. Your family, your Evo abilities. Oh no. Oh no. No. Oh. oh. Wait. I didn't fall down. Okay. Where is my? Okay. Here it is. But yeah, so basically this guy, Trevor, uh, he's running this lab about uh, of like trying to gain these Evo abilities for himself and world domination stuff. And he baited us back in here because he knows us from childhood and uh, we fell into his trap because we're stupid, I guess. And uh, yeah, now we have to take care of these guys. 
one is alive, yes, as always. And uh, I'm very good at aiming, yes. Okay. Yeah, you can see when everyone is dead because the uh, next waypoint is back here. And down we go. So this next level will feature our first um, box jumps. So you might be familiar with the concept, um, but since we have um, time slowdown, which allows us to jump higher, and the physics are also a bit wonky during it, uh, it's basically classic box jumps but on steroids. But first we just uh, avoid this whole elevator ride by jumping down this slope and then reloading checkpoint at the bottom. And then the idea is to grab a box or any object like that you can stand on. Um, you put it down, you jump on top of it, you yourself jump with time slowdown, you pull it towards you with telekinesis and then you um, stop the time slowdown so it just collides with you and you get a pretty nice boost. Here we have to actually hit a pretty tight hole up there so we can jump all the way to the top. Let's see, that's not where I wanted to go, so we have to try again. Yeah, this is probably one of the most precise ones. Not sure about this either, but we'll see. Uh, this looks manageable, yes, okay. So that's pretty much already the level. Just have to go into the other timeline, drop down here, and then we're done. So that's basically how box jumps look slash work. Um, there will be a few more, um, but I don't think the next one is until a few levels in. And this next level is basically just run to the end if I if it's the level that I think it is. It looks at least like it. Yes, okay. Um, here we don't want to get squished. Or chopped apart. Uh, okay, almost landed in the lava. <laughs> of course I didn't mention that, but we also don't want to land in the lava. And here it's just uh, some jumping. Ugh. Very fast jumping. And then we're actually at the end of the level, but there are three guys that we have to take care of in the other timeline. Luckily there's a fire extinguisher here to take care of this melee guy, because melee guys are pretty annoying since they can uh, stun you for quite long. Okay. Okay. And it's always when you kill the last guy, like, the game tells you, oh, you found a key even though you can technically be, like, I don't know. 10 meters away from him, the key just appears in your non-existent inventory. Um, here will be the next box jump after we get there, which will take a while, because as you might expect, there is some more conversations to be had. Actually, I lied. Uh, this is in the level after this, I think. <laughs> Never mind, I know this game. Uh, there is actually just some fighting here. I don't want to be too close to the explosion, because else it can also stun me. Okay, and then there's this guy. There are two guys in the other timeline, so I take this explosive barrel with me, which deals some nice damage to these guys. I actually took both of them out, that's somewhat rare. And here we have to use the time slowdown jump to grab this ledge, which you usually shouldn't grab, and apparently Cassandra also doesn't want to grab. Yeah, this is a pretty dumb jump. Uh, Okay, this looks better. There we go. Okay, can I... I want to jump further up there. We... Because if I was allowed to, I could go out of bounds, yes. So you can tell in like the background how... Yeah, this looks very, very mirror's edgy, doesn't it? With the whole out of bounds thing. And um, now we just again have to wait out the conversation and then swap timeline and then we hit the loading trigger for the next level. And this is the one with the box jump, yes. So the idea is to use the box jump to uh, reach or to go out of bounds and then we have to in out of bounds maneuver to the end of the level where 
in a normal playthrough you would like have to you would end up in an elevator that like doesn't move and you would have to manually uh, remove the wires to let it drop down um, we will do that from out of bounds but it's like a bit of a timed event because you're not supposed to do it from out of bounds but my time slowdown should be sufficient to do that somewhat reliably um, yeah but first the box jumps well first getting there which as you can tell we're doing somewhat slowly because crouching through air vents is fun um, yeah also here you would find out that there are a lot of more um, people in prison slash kept here for reasons or were kept here at least because timelines and stuff um, so we want to get into that uh, hole you can see up there so we have to do kind of a oops that's not gonna work please stabilize thank you we have to kind of do a forwards box jump I wish to yes thank you okay and then we need another similar object to do the next box jump and sadly it's only this desk here that's available to do that which has a bit of a weird behavior sometimes but we'll see I don't want it to uh, we'll see this uh, never mind it worked um, yeah so enjoy the lighting okay and this is the elevator but uh, if we were to just remove the wirings here we would just drop straight down so, but we have to do it for all three we still drop down but this time it's the low trigger for the next level so that's that um, here you can already see in the background this huge tree we will actually carry around with us but because timelines we will uh, carry it around with us as a small tree as a sapling and then we will bring it to the start of the level which will then allow us to climb the tree and get into the next level it all makes sense eventually um, but first we take this barrel with us because it will be our only projectile in the next fight which waits for us around the corner um, also some prisoner that is kept here for story reasons and that we have to wait the conversation out but this one isn't too long at least so you can see we have three guys here okay 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 and now some rapid fire uh, timeline transitions because you only can get here in this timeline but you can only activate this in that timeline and then you have to run away in the other timeline but then it's blocked here so you have to switch into this timeline but then there are enemies here so you don't want to get shot so you have to switch around and this guy could follow you so you switch around again riveting um yeah so this is the the tree we need to make it carryable we have to quickly see it also as a fully grown tree there are some guys yeah this is what i was expecting usually you want them to just already like run through the door before you get there because else you yeah run against the door but so be it and then we go back and now it's a big tree and this brings us to the next level which has like the weirdest thing in this game and i actually kind of wish drunken shoe was here because he found this whatever it is so you can there is a to my left will be like a voiding or a void zone so if i touch it i get teleported back to the start of the level but if at the same time you try to mash time travel thing yeah so you can see now my next waypoint is 500 meters away um, and if i swap into the other timeline there is no collision and now you will see a lot of uh, darkness and i will try to maneuver to the next uh, level loading zone i already don't see my uh, <laughs> where what where am i oh, oh now i see okay all of this makes sense. I can totally see. Yeah, I told you. So yeah, 
by having that second timeline not have any collision, we can like clip straight to the the end of the level, which is super useful. Um, but it's quite interesting because when you when I tried to learn this game just by watching PBs um, of other people and they did this, I had no idea what was going on. And then I looked like looked for the discovery video of this, and it was posted by a certain drunken shoe, which I just had got to know like one year earlier. So I asked him about it, and the first thing he said was like, why are you learning this game? Please stop. Uh, so everyone very happy with this game. Um, yeah, anyway, so we reunited with Alex here, who was uh, still being mistreated by the guards, which we took care of one way or another. And uh, this is supposed to be the, the big reveal uh, part slash conversation, where uh, it's now revealed that even though Alex kept telling us that he's in grave danger, he's totally fine. And turns out he manipulated us as well to get here because uh, reasons. Uh, and soon the antagonist Mason will join as well. And then there will be a big old fight, but only between us and Alex because he's our final test something. Um, so, yeah, there you can see Mason. Also, this conversation takes forever, so don't worry, you're not missing anything apart from the story, which is fine to miss out on. Um, so, the fight will have two phases. So, you can see in the background there is this pretty long ledge spanning the entire like diameter of the room. Uh, Alex will be patrolling up and down that ledge or platform, and he will occasionally throw rocks at us through the windows uh, in the background. And the idea is that you slow down time, catch the rock, and throw the rock at the pillars that are holding up the, the platform. You can barely see in the background. Um, there are three pillars you have to destroy, but there is a pretty tight timing that allows you to two-cycle it, so it's only supposed to, you're supposed to take three cycles for three rocks. But if you catch one rock, but don't fire it at the pillars yet, there is enough time for Alex to throw a second rock at you, for you to throw your first rock and then catch the second rock all in one go. Uh, it's, as I said, somewhat tight timing, and it doesn't save a huge amount of time, but it's always nice to get that. And then once those three pillars are destroyed, um, the whole thing collapses, and the second phase of the fight will take place at the bottom of the room um, where Alex will float around using his Evo abilities and cause a tornado and the idea is to interrupt him by either using our soon to have new ability to shoot energy projectiles or using one of the many objects that are flying around to interrupt him and then he will drop down into one of the four uh, fans that are down there yeah down there but first, let's, I'll try to catch some rocks. Ah, uh, yeah, so now it was too late. I still have a second chance to get a two cycle. I would have had a two cycle, but I shot my first rock way too high. <laughs> but yeah, so that's fine. You get the idea. Also, very nice walking animation there. So yeah, from now on, we have like this energy projectile we can use, which is very handy because it basically means we don't have to use any like huge objects anymore to throw at people. And now we wait for him to get out of this animation and to start the tornado. I will use time slowdown for this because if you're not in time slowdown, it will push you out instantly to the edge of the room and you couldn't hit him anymore. We don't want that. We want to interrupt him as close by as possible. On. Should be it, yeah, okay. And uh, yeah, that's the sad fate of, of Alex. Totally unexpected, of course. It's revealed that he like has a crush on us and teen teenage stuff, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that. From now on, it's just three more levels, I think, maybe. Yeah, it would make sense. So this game has a total of 15 levels. Um, well, 
according to the game 16, but it just counts the uh, closing cutscene and credits as its own level, which we don't. Um, so yeah, we're in, this is the end of level 12, and uh, yeah. From now on, we have like max uh, maxed out our our abilities, so this is like as strong as it gets. So we have like max duration on our uh, time slowdown and max power for our telekinesis and all that stuff. Um, so you can tell it's slowly approaching approaching the end of the game. Um, but the final levels are all a bit tricky because we skip huge parts of the level. And there are quite a few ways to mess them up. So if you mess up, you not only get the loading screen, but you also get sent back a long, long way to the previous checkpoint, since we skip pretty much all of them. Um, but yeah, let's see how that goes. We will have uh, another box jump here at the start. Once we get there, of course. Uh, so this time we'll just use one of these small boxes. Doesn't really matter too much the size of it, as long as they're, as long as you're able to stand on them, and as long as they can slam into you, it's all good. Uh, it's un well, if you can stand on top of them, that is. Okay. And then we jump over here, and then we shift, and now we're here, which we is where we shouldn't be. Um, luckily, slowing down time also reduces fall damage for reasons, uh, and I don't want to fall all the way down yet. I want to take a quick landing here, regenerate some health, because then I have to drop all the way down there, and that takes quite a bit of, or loses me quite a bit of health. Um, here we just make our way down now. I didn't mean to land on that, but uh, okay. And then I have to crouch. So the thing with traveling between timelines is you can only do that if both where you start and where you end up in are not obstructed by anything. So sometimes we'll just mash the time travel key and nothing happens, which is whenever yeah there is either an enemy in the other. Sp uh, spot or an object, and we don't want that. So sometimes we, for example, have to crouch to be able to time travel because in the other timeline there is still some object that we can only bypass by crouching. But yeah, that was level 13, um, which means we're getting to the second to the last level now, um, which has the last box jump actually, pretty much at the start of it. And Finally, uh, also some nice long conversations that we can skip. I know everyone misses those. Always a highlight of every run. But first the action, then the reward. Um, actually, I somewhat lied. I forgot there was a <laughs> longer conversation on the elevator here that we also can't skip. But this conversation is nothing compared to what we will have later on. Okay, so this we need, here we have to be, this we drop, uh, this doesn't look too stable but might work, let's see, uh, yeah, yeah, this looks good, because we can get through this crack here, take a lot of fall damage but it doesn't matter, and then we can go to this part where we need to time shift to drop down and then here we have to crouch and take this object here to put it on this switch in the other timeline so the next door here opens and it allows us to get into this elevator um, so from here on out there isn't like too many things to do apart from first waiting for this elevator to finish and then get to the next cutscene which just requires us to get or go through an air vent um, and then pretty nice long conversation with like the final element to the plot, which is our uh, sister Dahlia, who is our uh, older sister, but surprisingly she's uh, younger than us in this timeline. That's so crazy. Uh, that's her. And uh, so this is the big reunion, even though uh, they're both not aware of it right now, but they will figure it out, I guess. 
Um, and after this, it's just uh, basically waiting for the end of the level. We like ha so, like as you can see, she's also in this kind of like containment area where she's being tested and stuff. So we have to disable the lasers for her to to get out. And the whole plan is that she steals the formula that Mason wants to have in the future. Uh, she steals in the past, and then, yeah, whatever. I don't. I gave up on following the story. But yeah, uh, so now they figure out that they're uh, sisters and stuff. And then uh, Mason is not too happy about stuff being delayed, so he interrupts this very wholesome moment. And then we just wait until we can deactivate the lasers and we're good to go to the end of the level somewhat. Um, the final level will be quite, uh, I don't know how to put it, can be somewhat stressful. So the first part is a longer fight against quite a few enemies that spawn in, in somewhat set positions after somewhat set events. So that's not the, the really, the really uh, important part. The important part, of course, is then the, the final boss fight against uh, Mason. Even though we will not really fight him, we will, as you might expect at this point, we will try to go out of bounds and reach the level end trigger. But that out of bounds can take quite a while and it's pretty finicky and as you might expect, we don't really get a checkpoint once we start it, so if we mess up then we go quite the way back. So that's that. We can use our energy projectile to take care of these guys, yes, okay. And then we just wait. And then we go into the final level. Uh, yeah, so you can tell uh, some of the things that hold this game back from being a <laughs> very uh, grindy game. Just mainly that nobody wants to sit through all these conversations and loading screens and cutscenes. But I hope you were also able to see that there are quite a few nice tricks and glitches. And it's overall pretty fun to run if you get to run it. Which sadly is only for like half of the run length. The rest is waiting out and waiting for stuff to happen. But that gives the organizer a quick uh, way to chime in. If I wouldn't say it's a quick way, it's actually take your I have, time. Okay, I have a lot yeah, of time. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, so we are aware of an issue with some people not apparently not getting their donations through. Uh, we're working on that, but it's probably related to PayPal not routing their donations through. In any case, we have one by Zephyr who is an ESA organizer. So shout outs to them. Uh, they're doing a lot of work to make these events possible for us as well. So thanks Zephyr for, yeah, five dollars and saying good luck to the Heck crew. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so time for the first phase. Actually, here you don't want to run out too early because then the enemies don't start spawning, which is also a great thing to find out at the end of your run. Um, yeah, so there are some explosive things we can use here, but not too many, so I use them more sparingly. On the like more armored enemies, I guess you could say. Okay, that's that guy. Okay, then the next guy will also spawn here, so I'm already waiting for that to happen. That's him. And then this, so these types of enemies, they don't slow down during time slowdown, so what's the point? There should be a melee guy here, yeah, this guy, and there's an, yeah, as you can see, I mean, it's time slowdown now, but his bullets also move normally, so not much you can do there, and then it's just two more melee guys. I will actually already lure to the end of the level, so I don't have to wait for too long, except that he got knocked down to the other side of the room. Anyways, uh, uh, camera, thank you. So yeah, uh, that's the first part, and now this is the final boss uh, alleged fight, more like boss parkour. Um, the thing about this out of bounds part is that there is a lot of geometry that we don't want to be there because it can, like if you bonk or if you like hit the wrong collision, you can get, or geometry, 
you can get sent to the bottom of the level and there is no ledge or any way to get back up. And that's obviously very not desirable. Um, so we want to make sure that doesn't happen, but it's not always that easy. But we'll see. It's like the final part of the run. Let's hope it goes well, because the rest also went somewhat well. Oh yeah, also Mason has superpowers because uh, something. Um, but he will not get to use them too much. So the first thing we have to do is get him into the past timeline, because right now we're in the current or in the future timeline. So we have to grab him and then time shift, and now we just run away basically. But in the other timeline again, because the geometry is more favorable there. So we can get on top of this door, then switch back, get on this ledge, time shift to get through here. So this is where one of this, these more dangerous collisions can be. You couldn't even see it because it's on the ceiling, but if you go too far left, it just knocks you down. Um, you will not be able to see too much here because obviously we're not supposed to be here, but I want to get into this corner, which we can luckily stand on, and then we can grab this ledge and time shift. Then hopefully... Nah, that's exactly what I wanted to avoid. So now we have to do it again. Yeah, that's probably the most uh, precise jump there. Because you actually can't see <laughs> anything. All you know is you don't want to get the wall scramble too early, but okay, we grabbed something, which is good. And now we want to land on this and run around. So this is basically the top of the arena, which is like a circular shape. And we go here. Luckily, there's also an invisible wall preventing us to fall back inside. Time shift to get to the bottom here, so you can get somewhat ready on time. Uh, why am I slowing down time? I want to go fast, thank you. So it's just once I reach the end of the level, there will be a loading screen. And then it's time, which is, you can already see back there, is an elevator. So that is uh, time. Nice. Yeah, that went pretty well. Uh, and that's pretty much all there is to say about this game. As you can tell, it can be fun if the game lets you to have fun, but uh, usually it doesn't. Usually you look at the screen and wait for something to happen. But uh, yeah, um, that's a very authentic and uh, helpful sneak peek at what Mirror's Edge will be like mm -hmm. later on in the marathon. Um, I hope you will not only enjoy that, but also all of the other runs that will happen throughout this weekend and today. I um, don't think there is much more to say about this. Uh, I will also be in action on Sunday with uh, Tomb Raider, so an even worse game. Um, so we'll see about that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Yeah, Caddy has a striking resemblance between this game and Mirror's Edge, really. Yeah, you know, it's, right? it's basically the same <laughs> game. <laughs> Couldn't tell. Especially the My same sister. characters here. I, it's, yeah. I yeah, I have one more thing to on. say. Uh, there's your and one I biggest fan in chat right now, Shafourini, saying good luck. <laughs> I am your biggest fan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I am actually <laughs> officially Shafourini's biggest fanboy because it says so on my badge. So, uh, so the happy that the camera's up there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I can't even see. Oh, now I can see. Uh, yeah, it says right there. She's okay. biggest fanboy. So there you have it. Yeah, thank you, Kata. Thank you for having me.
Well, hello. What options would you like to fidget with today?